والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين It's lovely to be back I just said this to Sheikh Yasser and um, the sisters it start to feel like home like when you land this is how you know it's home is when you land in the place you say oh okay and you start smiling and um, even the lady in the hotel she says oh the same room and I was like okay yeah sure why not Alhamdulillah Rabbi may Allah bless this community it's beautiful subhanallah on a Friday night this is amazing and the number of the youth is also beautiful so Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen since last time I was here, and we all are living it, and we lived it again today, subhanAllah. As I was boarding, the same happened again. So let's not forget, even if it's going to take years, let's not forget them. Let's not get used to it. You can never get used to injustice. We should never get used to um, pain and suffering of the others. And the more we see what we are seeing, and again, I was saying this to myself, how grateful we are, we should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm saying this to myself, what will I say to him when I stand in front of him? Everybody in this room, what test we went through, right? And I mean, the story is from Gaza, which one we start to which one we end. You heard Sheikh Umar talking about the man who's Khalid, who he lost his granddaughter, Ruh al Ruh, he used to call her, the soul of the soul. And it's not now becoming a hashtag. And everybody else, and the woman who says, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, and the girl who said, It is she, it is she, you've seen her. She was saying, that It's my mother, I know her from her hair. And the man trying to console her and says, No, it is not. She says, No, I know it is she. I mean, the story is beyond. So the point I'm trying to make is, for us, living in the blessed world, I just came back from Africa on Tuesday. Everybody wants to come and live in the States. Everyone. I, it was a huge conference. I was with the youth, and I just asked, who wants to come with me on Tuesday? And I didn't say California. I just said America. Every hand was up. And I was like, why? And I asked them. I, I got beautiful answers. But the point is, we the blessed ones, we need to remember this. And we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then I'm going to get you to the sabrun jameel, the beautiful patient. The beautiful patient for us, and again may Allah forgive us, is when the temperature becomes 50 or becomes 40 in Dallas. And it gets very cold and everybody starts complaining. And if you come to California, even worse. Because everything is available, and everything is available in the best way and easy. You want to go and buy any fruits, you're going to st stand in front of there and says, which one I'm going to take? And many of us, walillahi alhamdulillah, we don't even think about the price. So the more we see this, and I kept asking myself, Ya Allah, there is a hikmah, you're making me see this and live this. And the only thing I say, show me your wisdom and make me learn from it and make it in, make it in a way to make my right scale heavier. So the reason we chose Surah Yusuf, it's actually these are series. I started doing it from September with the community in Islamic Center of Irvine. It's on Tuesdays usually. It's the women program. It's live streamed. All of us know the Quran. And now you're going to tell me all of us? Yes, all of us. All of us know something called Quran. Most of us can read it. Majority of us, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm looking at everybody here. Majority of us don't know what Allah is telling us. And I'm not saying the meanings. 
again, if you are born like me, blessed to know the Arabic language, so of course I say, I know what's Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim what it means. If you know English, very easy, you go in the name of Allah, the most merciful. What does it mean? What does it mean in my life as I am now living wherever Allah wants me to live in whatever condition? So this is what the series is actually. It's called Understanding the Quran. I didn't call it Tafsir because everybody thinks Tafsir in a different way. So we finished, subhanAllah, we finished Surah Al-Ankabut and I was not planning to do Surah Yusuf. I was planning to do another Surah and then the Gaza happened. And I was like, this is what we need. Why is that? Now in one hour, I'm not going to be able to cover everything. Again, we did it. Fifth week will be this coming Tuesday. Whenever you read the Quran, chapters of the Quran, this will be very good for you as in general, especially getting ready for Ramadan. It's a couple of things when you look at surah, any surah, pick up any surah from the Quran, whether it's Surah Al-Baqarah, what Sheikh Yasser just read for us, or you're reading Surah Al-Nas, the last chapter in the Quran. It's a couple of things pay attention to. Each one of you. Number one is the name. Why the name of the surah? Right? And I can give you many questions, and I know how you will answer, but just a quick one to bring your attention to the deeper meaning. Surah Al-Baqarah, which we just heard part. Why Allah called the Surah Al-Baqarah? Everybody is going to tell me because the story of the Baqarah is in there, right? Yes? Anyone will say different? Then I'm going to tell you, so why it's not called Surah Musa? The, the longest, the commonest story theme, especially in the first part of Surah Al-Baqarah, is about Bani Israel and Musa, the name of Musa repeated. Surah Al-Qasas, half of it is about the story of Sayyidina Musa. Why it is not called Musa? So don't be, this is the superficial answer. Well, yeah, of course it's Surah Al-Baqarah is called. But what does the Baqarah or the cow, when I hear Al-Baqarah, what is Allah reminding me? Not the cow. Right? But what was the story of Al-Baqarah? The arguments of Bani Israel. And قَالَ أَنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةً Okay, we, we're not convinced. Why? We didn't know. And three times, and finally they said we will. One of the messages of Surah Al-Baqarah, don't argue, submit to Allah. So let's come to Surah Yusuf. The first thing you come is the name of the Surah. What, when Yusuf name comes to you. When you come and open the Quran and you are in the 12th part of the Quran and you see Yusuf, what's the first thing come to your mind? What does the name Yusuf brings to your mind? There's many messages in the name of Yusuf. Beauty. Beauty comes around number one, or could be two. Comes tests. And not a beautiful test meaning a test of luxury because the tests are two kinds. And all of us have to remember, we are, as I am speaking now, in this masjid, we are absolutely being tested. There is no bombings. We have electricity, alhamdulillah. The temperature is beautiful. It's beautiful. But we are being tested in every second because the test is not only with the hardship. We test you. And Allah said this in Surah Al-Anbiya. We test you, nablukum, we'll test you. Bishar, evil, things we don't like. What the people of Gaza are going through. Wal khayri, good, luxury, prosperity, safety, peace. Now, what? Fitna, fitna is test or trial. And you are going to go back to us. So when I remember the name of Yusuf, or I am reading Surah Yusuf, Absolutely, the test is going to come in my mind, right? What else when you, when you read the Yusuf? Or you're reading it, or just you heard it, or you read the name Yusuf. How did he respond to the test? That's the main message of Surah Yusuf. Because the end of Surah Yusuf is the message to Rasulullah Surah Yusuf was revealed in one of the hardest time of the life of Rasul It's a Makki surah. was revealed in Mecca. But it was when he just lost his uncle, lost his wife, and now the people of Mecca starts prosecuting him like what is happening now in the people of Gaza. And you can imagine, there is a deep sorrow. Rasul lost one of the most beloved person to him, 
Sayyida Khadija, now the most important support, and now the people are prosecuting him. And Allah revealed Surah Yusuf. It's the only surah in the Quran that has the whole story. Every other story is divided. If you read the story of Sayyidina Musa, his birth and what happened is in the Qasas. His discussion with Fir'aun in more than one, in Al-Shu'ara, in Al-A'raf. You come into his, uh, for example, uh, what happened, if I'm remembering now, uh, his, his discussion with the people of Bani Israel, you have it in Taha, you have it in Al-A'raf. It's the only story. These are all outlined, they call it. M m the many tafasir came in this, but one of the most beautiful one is actually in the shade of the Quran. Before he talks about any, he goes to the detail, he gives you the overall. So when you come to Surah Yusuf, you're going to say, ha ha, it's all revealed at time of difficulty. So Allah is telling me, number one, remember, the Quran talked to me. It doesn't matter how old I am, where I live. It's telling me when you're going through a tough time, read Surah Yusuf and learn from Surah Yusuf. And you don't learn only from Sayyidina Yusuf. Because there is, in the, in the story, for those of you who have ever written a story or a book, there is certain main character. And there is not only Sayyidina Yusuf in here. There's many players, we say. It is him who's the most important second player. Let's see, anybody. His father, Sayyidina Yaqub. And then, you get all are the same because everyone played a role in his life. You have the brothers, you have the two, you have the wife of the minister. Then you have the people, the two men with him in the prison, right? What is the two biggest players in Surah Yusuf? It's not human beings. I'm giving you a clue. It's not human beings. Two most important players in his life that changed his life. Yeah, just a second. Anyone? Raise your hand. Bismillah. Allah is always number one in everyone, but in that story. No. Brothers, please. Exactly. The dream, not only his dream, dream, dream played a huge role in his life, true or false. Right? There is two dreams in Surah Yusuf, not one. Was one his dream, but the other one was? The, nope, the two dreams of the two men. Or the dream, yeah, the two dreams, two men, each one had a dream. Why they played a role? Because because of the dream that he interpret in the jail, at the end he was removed out of the jail. And actually, in fact, there is three dreams. Sayyidina Yusuf, the two men, and the king saw the dream. And the king dream is what changed his life. What is the second biggest player? Not a human being. A I'm sorry? The feeling? No. You haven't read Surah Yusuf. Yes. The shirt. The shirt. The shirt is the main player. Why? The shirt was the reason he ended up in the well, the shirt showed that his brothers were jealous and plot against him. The shirt showed that he was approached by the wife of the minister. The shirt, huh? at the end, the shirt made the father has his sight back again. So don't forget, what do I learn from this? Again, everything in the Quran is for you and me. It is not only people that you have to pay attention in your life. For example, what is the biggest test you have here? Is not a human being. Here. It's the masjid itself. Why is that? Because did the masjid change my life? Is the masjid like the shirt of Sayyidina Yusuf in my life? Is the masjid like the dream in the life of Sayyidina Yusuf? The masjid is something I'm going to be asked about. Allah gave it to me. 
Allah brought you here, made you here close, you can come. So everything, again, in the story, you're going to say, okay, so a, I, I don't have a shirt, but what shirts I have in my life? I didn't see a dream, but what is equivalent to the dream that changed my life? And the more we pay attention to this, this is how you reflect on the Quran. There's a new, very new, um, like a science now called Tadabbur al Quran. I mean, I'm sure many of you have heard about that, which is not tafsir, is you reflect on what Allah is saying. Now, if you look at his life, there's a lot of the third player in his life is going to be. I doubt if any one of you will know because you have to be, you have to have read and studied. It's actually feelings. Feelings played a huge role in the life of Sayyidina Yusuf. True or false? I don't hear it. Okay, which feelings now? Of course I'm going to ask you. Tawakkul? Tawakkul is not a feeling. Tawakkul is a faith. What feelings played a role in his life? T start from the beginning. Bismillah. Number one, jealousy. Actually, before the jealousy, which led to jealousy, the love, that is love of his father to him, led to another feeling, which is jealousy, led to another feeling, which is plotting and hatred. They wanted to kill him. The first thing came to their mind, these are brothers. This is your family. Uqtulu Yusuf. The first thing they said, kill him. Then the other one of the, or the oldest brother, as they say, was a little bit more wiser. Leave, them in the, leave him in the well. So at least we feel better. We didn't kill him. He will die. But we didn't kill him ourselves. So there is love. There is jealousy. Then, then, you have to know the story. Another love. Love and lust, desire. What happened to the wife of Al-Aziz? These feelings played a role in his life. These feelings, just not like feeling, I don't feel good this morning. The feeling changed his life. If there was no love of the father, there will have not been a jealousy. If there, were, if there was no jealousy, he will not end up in the, in the well. If there was no jealousy and end up in the well, he will not have been a slave. If there was no slave, he will not have ended up in the house of the minister. And then there will not be another love. What's the other feeling? See, how many, okay, I want to see hands, everybody. How many times, or everybody in this room, read Surah Yusuf at one point in their life? Raise your hand. Tayyib. So what is the next feeling? So we said love, jealousy, love. Now the wife of the minister loved him, right? Okay, what is the next feeling? I'm sorry? Hope? Volm, volm, injustice. Before that, who, uh, that feeling led to the injustice. What was the feeling? Yeah. Now, I, I wish if there was fear of Allah, there would be no injustice. Why did he end up in jail? First, why did he end up in jail? I'm sorry, he's answering. I'll come to you in a second. He didn't want to? MashaAllah, he didn't want to break Allah's rule. True or false? MashaAllah, what is your name? Abdul Rahman, one of the most beloved names to Allah, you know that. Yep. Well, the most beloved names to Allah, Ma'ubida wa Hummida. It's Abdul Rahman is one of them. So it is, he didn't want to break the rules. But what, what feeling, come on, what feeling led him to be in the jail? Love. One, one, one. I'm sorry? It is not takabbur. It's anger. She was upset with him because he didn't do what she wanted. What ended up? She plotted, convinced her husband, put him in the jail. What do I learn? 
Again, I'm taking you through. So what feeling? Every feeling I go through, every feeling I go through, all of us, and again, love, hate, jealousy, um, feeling arrogant, all uh, arrogance, all these feelings has sequences. And sequences change my life, bring me closer to Allah or further away from Allah and change the course of my life. So the anger she felt because the woman in this city made fun of her وقال نسوة في المدينة امرأة العزيز تراود فتاها عن نفسه قد شغفها حبا إنا لنراها في ضلال مبين The talk of the town The woman of the town starts saying Wow, the wife of the minister Imagine a leader in, in this town The wife of the governor right? All the women are talking about her Oh, she fell in love with this man which means he, he did not want her. You know, if you know the Arabic, she's in love. Allah didn't say they were in love. And she, Naraha fi Mubin, she is absolutely doing things unright. She is going astray. Her response feeling upset and angry and arrogance. Wait, 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 wait. See how I'm going to do. Come on in all. And if you read the commentary on this, is amazing how she brought everybody. She brought all the women, brought them fruits, got them knives so they can cut the knife. And as they were cutting the fruit, she said, come on in. And they looked at him and they thought they were cutting the fruit. They were actually cutting their hands. And those of you who know Arabic, look at how Allah used it. Meaning they kept doing it, looking at him. قلنا حاشا لله واو ما هذا بشر this is not a human being what feeling is this admiration and surprise in هذا الا ملك كريم this is an angel feelings plays a huge role in our life because we're human and feelings if we use it in the right way change our life, and if you use it in the bad way, change our life. And feelings changed his life. Very interesting point, we never saw his feelings. He didn't let his feelings move him. Everybody around him in the story, their feelings changed his life, but his feelings were what? Constant, that's a sabr al jameel. His feelings all the way was constant. What was his feeling? Now let's see. If anyone knows that. Anybody? Yes. I wouldn't say fear of Allah. Let's stay away from the fear of Allah. I'm, so, I'm sorry? Connected to Allah. You know why? Again, when you read it, in the beginning of the story, there isn't many, many things he said. Till the wife of the Aziz in that moment that many of us will have been weak and not necessarily feeling between man and a woman, but when temptation comes to you and me. He was tempted. He was a young man. He's a slave. This is the wife of the boss, and they said she made herself so beautiful. And he knew if he didn't respond to what she wants, he will end up in big trouble. What is the first thing came of his mouth? That's the feeling, that's the attachment to Allah. What did he say? Ma'ad Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. How many of us in this room, young and not very young, when I am tested by temptation, and temptation is a huge wide range, from food to people to everything else, the first thing come in my mouth is Ma'ad Allah. No. Most of us, what is the first feeling comes out? I'm sorry? Is absolutely, is justification. And this dialogue, I call it. You know, it's only one time, alhamdulillah, Allah is ghafoor rahim Don't be too harsh. Don't make Islam too hard. All this, not him. And if you look at him, when his feelings were tested, when he saw his brothers, I always want to feel, live that scene. 
you hurted me. I was eight years of age. They say he was between eight and 10. And because of you, I ended up orphan, away from my family, stayed for 40 days at least in a well with scorpions and with snakes, ended up being slave, ended up being in jail. I did nothing, it's because of you, and you come in front of me. And I am now in a position of power. What will I do to you? What feelings will come inside me? And Allah expressed his feelings when he first said, Yusuf, They all entered. And he knew them. Allah is telling us he knew them. Imagine this, all of you. Everyone in this room. Imagine this. Somebody in the current terminology destroyed your life made you get fired of your job, lose your family, you need to move out of your home and comfort, and now you are in position of power, and they come in front of you. What is the feelings? Feelings first. Feelings. Anger. And just wait. Don't we say this? That's the moment. Let me see which one I'm going to do. What did he do? Nothing. Nothing. Even when they said to him, La ilaha illallah, second time, when he wanted to take his younger brother, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the trick, and they said, Ya ayuha la'iru innakum lasariqoon, oh, hey, hey group, you are, you're thieves. And then when they proved they were thieves, what did they say to him? Oh, if this boy had uh, uh, stole something, oh, his brother before stole something. La ilaha illallah. Forty years later, they're still jealous of him. What will you do? You kill them. Right? You put them all in jail. You look at them and say, haven't you had enough? Yani, how many years you still hate me and you are jealous of me? Is that fair? Honestly, isn't that fair? And even in Islam, if someone hurts you, fairness is to hurt them exactly the same way. Allah said this in Surah Ashura. When someone hurts you, you hurt exactly the same. That's fairness. What did he do? What did he do? What did he feel and do? فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ he kept it inside and didn't show any feelings. He was talking to himself. They are worse than you, and Allah will give you victory. How many of us would have done that? I doubt it. This is how I say I'm saying, I'm talking about myself. I know you. You all are better than me. I doubt it. And I keep saying, Ya Allah, I'm not an angel. Right? So the feelings... There is love, there is hate, there is jealousy. And what is this feeling called? Sabrun Jameel. That's the Sabrul Jameel. When you don't act, you act like there is nothing. Exactly the grandfather who was holding this beautiful reem, right? And he's kissing her as if she is alive. And, he, and then I'm sure you all saw this, when he was comping their hair, both of them, and cleaning, and nothing. This is sabrun jameel. When, when the feelings or the, what happens or the circumstances is way above human perception, and you still connected with Allah, act and feel and say, what to please is Allah, sabrun jameel. Now, Surah Yusuf is a crescendo. If anybody of you know what this means, meaning it comes, it gets more tense, more tense, more tense, more tense. The end. Every time, every time I read it, I stop at this point and I say, Ya Allah, give me what you gave him and make me say what he said. 
This is in the last part of the story, but not the surah, because the chapter when the story ends now comes to the message to Rasul Alaihi And I'll end up with this, but let me cover this. So the end of the story, you all know, now he is the governor. He has his ruling everything. Now he come, they come again, right? And his father come back, the shirt, the father is seeing now. What did he say? Let me take you through. طيب. فلما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أبويه. Now they all entered. Imagine this. Imagine him here, right? And what you ever see, a governor with all the entourage. They entered. Who? فلما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أبويه. They, the brothers came in and the أبويه, father and the mother. What did he say? And I want you to feel... What will you feel and say? قَالَتْ خُلُوا مِصْرَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ First thing, no upset, no feeling, no I told you, see, come on in. Come to Egypt and you will be safe. No revenge. No wait and see what I will do. And this is to all of us. طيب. Then, وَرَفَعَ أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ He put his father and mother on his side on the throne. وَخَرُّوا لَهُ سُجَّدًا And this is before Islam where no one prostrate but to Allah. They all prostrated to him. What did he say? قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Daddy. Remember I told you the dream played a huge. And he said, Daddy, this is the interpretation. What is happening now? Now listen, this is all okay. This is all story. Now from here. This is the, the interpretation of my dream. My Lord made it true. Haqqa. Now look at this. And look at the relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّي حَقَّ My Lord made my dream comes true. Okay. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي And he treated me. He's talking to Allah. And he treated me so well. Give me your heart so well, in the well, slave, jail, and then stayed in jail. Ahsanabi. What did he say? And scholars comment on this beautifully. He said he only remembered, only remembered what Allah gave him as good. And he didn't mention any of his suffering. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ He treated me so well and made me leave the jail. He didn't say Allah put me in jail. He didn't say all my life was ruined. No. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي He used word إحسان. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ Now look at what he said to his brother. وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدُّ And he brought you all back to me from far away. Really? Far away. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي They did nothing. It's shaitan. Shaitan plotted and came to them. إِنَّ رَبِّي عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ My Lord is all-knowing, all-wise. Now the connection with Allah. How many of us will say this dua? When Allah gives you everything in your life. When you get the job you want, when you buy the house, when you give you the, f the family, Everything, he turned to Allah immediately. None of this lured him. None of this changed him. Rabbi. This is the dua, one of the most beautiful dua to me in the Quran. Rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulk. He turned to Allah and says, Ya Allah, you gave me all this sovereignty. Qad ataytani min al-mulk. Wa'allamtani min ta'wil al-ahadith. And you taught me. Nothing he did. It's all from Allah. And you taught me knowledge and interpret the dreams. Now he talks to Allah. See how many of us say this to Allah. Fatir as samawati wal ard, the originator of the heavens and the earth. Anta walif dunya wal akhira. You are my ally. He's not a friend. You are my protector in this life and in the hereafter. Now, what did he ask Allah? 
This is the adab of dua. This is the etiquette of dua. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now you ask. So he praised him, the originator of the heavens and the earth, right? And you are my protector. What did he ask him? Tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bisaliheen. Make me die as a Muslim and follow the righteous people. Alhiqni, you make me join the righteous. So he's not righteous. He's not. He said, make me follow. Alhiqni, make me follow or catch up. What a human being he is. And then Allah turned to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Immediately he said, Dalika mimma uhayna ilayk. Dalika natluhu alayka. Min anba il ghayb. Ma kunta ta'lamuhu anta wa man qabluka fasbir. No, I'm sorry, this is not a hadith al hud. Dalika natluhu alayka min anba il ghayb. This is what we are telling you from the unseen. Because he didn't know. Sayyidina Yusuf was way before Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. What did he tell him? What is the message to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam? It comes later on. Hatta idha stay as a Rasul. This is to the people of Gaza and this is to us. Hatta idha stay as a Rasul. When the prophets lost hope. وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُذِبُوا And they see that no one is believing them. جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا Our victory came to them. جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا this is what we all have to believe in. Whenever we feel so down, when we feel everything is not going or it's going to end up in a victory, جاءهم nasruna. So the victory doesn't come right away. And when I read these stories, Allah cannot give Sayyidina Yusuf right away. Allah could not have exposed the brothers and tell the father, his father is a prophet, go to this well, we'll get him out. But Allah make us all go through tests, and the tests takes time. And he tests us, in, again, in good and not in good. Basically, this is one of the names of Allah, Ar-Rabb. He, he treats us in a way to get us ready to where he wants us to be. And that's why it's a sabrul jameel. Wallahu al-musta'an. And, and, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ The last verse in Surah Yusuf. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لُؤُلِي الْأَلْبَابِ The reason of this story is not just to read a story. Yes, the Quran is a book of story also. But the story is not just this bedtime story and going to sleep. عِبْرَة What is عِبْرَة? عِبْرَة is admonition, is for you and me to learn from. But who will learn? لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Those who reflect. In our terminology, smart people. People who pay attention to details. مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى It was not a false speech or just talk, vain. وَلَكِنْ ذِكْرَى It's a reminder. What we need these days in what we are going through, whether here or Definitely there is need to remember. We're not the first people who are tested, and we are not going to be the last people who will be tested. The test is way to expose me. This is how I say. Surah At-Tawbah, and I will end up here, so we'll give you some time for question and answer. Chapter of At-Tawbah, the repentance in the Quran. One of the names of it, Surah Al-Fadiha, the chapter that exposed the hypocrites in Medina. What is happening today? I call it al-fadiha. It exposed everybody. And I'm not talking about politicians. I'm, a, I'm talking even about us as individuals. It exposed my relationship with Allah, my hope in Allah, my faith, my, my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It exposed how me, I'm talking about myself, how much nothing cheaper than talk. And when action comes in, how many of us will, um, I don't know what they will do. I don't know what will happen. And this is on individual level, or community level, or leaders level, and the highest leaders, leaders. One of the things, this since October 7, it exposed us as a community, as individuals, and exposed our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those, when they read the Quran, learn, 
when they read the Quran reflect and the Quran is a change, game changer for us. It's not only reading and get the reward. Ya Rabbi Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the, all the sufferings of the people of Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all their that those who have died as um, uh, martyrs, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sabrun jameel to all the families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal all those who are wounded. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal those who would have a long-term trauma. May Allah bring them back to their homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, give them better than what they lost. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory sooner than later. Ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alayhi. عليه وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا جزاكم الله خيرا. Any questions or I need to stop Sheikh Yasser? It's up to you. Yes, please. بسم الله. Of course you can speak in Arabic and I'll translate. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. من مرات شفت الحدث الكليب على الانترنت. so she saw a clip of mine online. حدث كتب تكلمي عن إنشاء المسلم. I was talking about raising children or raising the Muslim. كل ما أفكر لأن أنا الطريقة اللي تربيت فيها ما ما كانت شيء إسلامية صحيحة. Every time I think how I was raised up, I was not raised up as a proper Muslim, or the raising up way was not the proper Islamic way. Which has led me to leave Islam and become a Christian for more than ten years. I left Islam when I was thirteen. سبحان الله. Yes. So she became Christian at age thirteen. No, I came Christian in the age twenty, and I get baptized when I was twenty-seven. يا الله. Yes. That's the first time I meet this. Oh, we are a lot, unfortunately. So, and then I become an atheist for five years because one of my Christian friends who was studying to be um, a missionary in the Middle East, especially working with Syrian, she said to me when she was in the college studying Arabic, she spoke to one lady, and she's a Muslim Jordanian Palestinian lady, and she said, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in her, and she said, uh, Jesus said, you know, my sheep, they know my voice. And she said, I know my Lord's voice. And she was speaking like him. And that made me take a pause and the other events, which it's make me take a so pause. So you became atheist for five years and then? Yes. And then I read a novel, which because of this novel, I become a Muslim. Which novel? It's called Fi uh, Qalbi Unsa uh, The Inside writer, My Heart is a Woman. Uh -huh. Uh, the writer, she's from Tunisia. Her name, Dr. Khawla. And mashallah, so she wrote. So what's the question? So my question is, when I look to my background, I feel scared how I will be a future mother because I don't know how to raise my child as a Muslim. Didn't you just do a parenting program, Sheikh Yasser? <laughs> I'm sorry? That's what I know. In, so, my question is, I remember in your video you said you should start when the baby still feast. No, I said you should start before you get married. I really mean it. It's by choosing your spouse. Because this is one of the biggest issues in, in Muslims' homes. You have, and it's not always yes from your side. <laughs> like it's always the women are the best, women men are, no. I've seen the opposite too, is the two parents has to be on the same mindset mm -hmm. that they want both to raise their children as Muslims as a priority. Because when you put this as a priority, you will need to sacrifice from this dunya. I have another problem and I'm trying to, it's my own fight. I want to learn Quran, like to memorize Quran, not to learn Quran. But I want my child to be Hafiz. Why? Uh, because I wanted to be a Hafid, but I don't know how to be a Hafid. So I want to start with my child. I don't know how to start with my child. I From will where? Not, I will not recommend that. You all are looking at me. Don't make your children what you couldn't be. That's not fair for them. Did you get it? And this is one of the problems the youth suffer from. Right? 
the mother or the father wanted to be a physician, they couldn't for whatever the reason, they want the child. But the child doesn't want to. Let the child love the Quran. And he or she wants to memorize, you help them. But don't tell him or her, I want you to be to memorize the Quran, because I couldn't memorize the Quran. No. The only thing I'll tell the child, right, and this is actually one of the reasons, the main reason I memorized the Quran, because I wanted to crown my parents. Right? Because that's a hadith. You memorize the Quran, you crown your parents on the day of judgment. Don't do, don't make your children who you wanted to be but you couldn't. It's not fair. They're not you. They are not you. All of everybody. Make your, the only thing I say, and again, Sheikh Yasser is way more expert in me than this. Raise your children on knowing Allah and loving Allah. Don't use the word haram. Don't use the word fear. Don't use tawakkul, taqwa, all these big names. They don't know what this means. Make them see Allah in everything, in everything, in you, in this, in this, in this. And but, and I will say this to everybody, faqidu shay la yu'ti, we say in Arabic, if you don't have it, you can't give it. If I don't see Allah in this, I can't convince my children. So the, this is why I said, you, the raising of children is before you get married. You work on yourself, you choose your spouse, you both work together. It's a, a process and the result, and this is the most important thing, is not in your hand. Allah took you away from or allowed you to leave Islam and Allah brought you back. It's not your parents. Mm -hmm. The only thing every parent in this room should do is don't forget your children in your dua. It doesn't matter what they did. When you get so upset with them, say, Ya Allah, guide them. And you need to say, Ameen. That's the best dua. And what a, what a lucky woman you are. I hope you are grateful to Allah. Now, that's shaitan coming to you. No, 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 don't let shaitan come to you. Look at the positives. You could have been, again, still atheist and you're not here. He brought you back. I always say, the one who made me do this, if it's good, he can make everybody else. So alhamdulillah. Any question from the brother? Bismillah. No question from the brothers? Yes, please. Just to be fair. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, yes. Wa alaykum as Dr. Oth, in this day and age, we live in a day where we're surrounded by fitan, not just on a, um, a level of consciousness, but even on a level of unconsciousness yes. with everything that we're surrounded by. Now, it's something that it took me a great deal of education for myself, but I think to myself, how do I protect the people around me from this unconscious fitan that we're subjected to? Did, on you, the daily? did you hear all the questions? A very nice question. There is obvious tests or fitna or, or temptations Fitna, the way you're talking about is temptations, but there is the subtle temptations that many of us don't pay attention. Anybody in this room studied marketing? Uh, that's why you asked this question. <laughs> exactly. Because that's how they make you, and make you and me buy something. It's not by telling me, go and buy it. No. It's a subtle message, right? Have you seen the, the ads for the medications? Now, of course, I'm a, med I'm a physician. Right? They tell you how good is the medication. They told, show you everything. When they come to the side effects, they say it very quickly, and they show very beautiful things is happening. That's a subtle message. So the subtle fitness we have here, the biggest subtle fitness is where? Is in the phones, in the internet. You're doing your homework. You're checking your email, and suddenly something comes up. You're checking the time of salah. Have you seen it in all the apps, right? And something comes in your face. The best, there is a strategies, but the first one is, is what the name of the book is Husnul Muslim. What is the fortress of the Muslim? What is it? Don't tell me the book, I know the book. But why the book is called Husnul Muslim? Why it's called the fortress of the Muslim? Come on, guys. I'm sorry? I can't hear you. Why? From what a dua? Because it's a hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu The meaning of shaitan is 
around us, subtle or obvious, goes in our blood. What will save me, the fortress, is a dhikr. It's a book of dhikr. The most famous book in Islam is Husn al-Muslim. Subhanallah. What did this man had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He didn't write any extra word. It's only the du'as. It's the most published book in every language. So the first thing is a dhikr. And a dhikr before the temptation comes in. That's why we have the morning and the evening at car, right? Allah mahfadni bayna idayi wa min khalfi wa an yameeni wa an shimali. Ya Allah protect me from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left, from what? Ah, the subtle things. I don't even know. I don't even know I'm exposed. And the second common or the most dangerous is the temptation that I love. I like it. I love it. You know when you have a food and you're fasting? What a struggle is this? When somebody puts in front of you whatever you like, biryani, chocolate, ice cream, and you're fasting. What a huge. So the best, number one, no one will protect me from any temptation, obvious or subtle, except Allah. Why did Allah save him from the obvious temptation? He is from our servants who are chosen or sincere. I want to be protected. I need to build my relationship with Allah. I work on my relationship with Allah in the night before I leave. I did my tahajjud. I read my salah. I read my Quran. I go out and I don't know how Allah protected me. Moved away. The ad comes in. I don't look at it. The ad's about to come in and my internet goes bad. That's all husn al-Muslim. So the best way, each one of you, is you build, or as the hadith of Rasul alayhi Know Allah at time of prosperity. He will know you at time of need. May Allah reward you. That's a very good question because we are bombarded by temptations. Anybody, especially if you, you go to universities or, or uh, schools or you work outside the Muslim community, it's, it's a huge fitna. And it's everywhere, by the way. It's not only in the West. It's everywhere. I, very recently, I was in the Middle East, and I just came back from Africa. It's everywhere, believe me. It just have a different shape and color. Subhanallah. Jazakumullahu khayran. I know there's a tea, right? Is the tea still served, Sheikh? Yes. <laughs> right? جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا